We've got Joao Zeferino joining me here on the program. He's going to be competing in the upcoming PFL welterweight tournament. Joao, how are you, man? Man, I'm good. Uh, you know, getting ready. It's a great opportunity, and uh, I want to go there and win it all. Yeah, it's, it's going to be an awesome tournament. We'll get all into that because there's so much to talk about about that. But first, uh, where am I catching you today? Uh, have you finished practice? You going to practice? Where am I getting you today? Uh, I'm in between practice. I had a tough jiu-jitsu session in the city with uh, Danaher, and I'm just sitting to, uh, to go for boxing later. Good stuff. Well, thanks for having me part of your uh, in-between time today. I appreciate it. And uh, it's been a while since we've seen you in the cage, man. I know you haven't fought uh, since July. Uh, what would you say you've improved on the most in the gym since the last time we saw you? Um, the last fight, uh, there was a bunch of things going on, but, um, since that fight, man, I'm a, I've been working a lot on my wrestling, my boxing, uh, my conditioning. So I start like a new program to get like some size, some strength and I'm feeling like much better. Okay. That's awesome. And uh, I know in between there, I'm sure you've been in contact with your manager, Ali Abdelaziz. Uh, I got to bring him up just because I know even when you're not fighting, he's still keeping tabs on you. You know, how nice is that to have a manager that's still, you know, kind of, uh, you know, checking up to see how everything's going? Yeah, he's a great guy, man. Like, uh, he's always, like, available for me. I bother him a lot, you know. It's like, Ali, I need a fight. Ali, I need this. I need that. And he's always there for me, man. He's a great guy. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, let's talk about your last fight. I know uh, things didn't go your way in that one in that uh, split decision. A little bit controversial in that one. Uh, when it went to the judges' scorecards, uh, that was at uh, PFL Daytona, did you feel like you won the fight or were you a little bit worried with the judges? Um, I wasn't concerned about like, the judges, man, because when you go through a decision, everything can happen. So I'm not going to say, oh, I won that fight. Every, uh, mo- like, not everyone, but a lot of people come at me and say, man, you won that fight, but... You know what? I left to the, to the judge, so I can't complain. You know, I can't be like a sore loser. There was a lot. It was very sleepy. It was really tough to fight there. Like it's very humid, but I should have done better. And and I know you want. Uh, you've been very vocal on social media about getting that rematch. Um, I know. Uh, you know, your, your next fight isn't one hundred percent official yet. But is that what you're gunning for? Is a rematch there? Uh, I really want a rematch. You know, like, um, but he don't want to. So what can I say? The guy, the guy don't want to fight me again. So. Uh, we ha- we have another another opponent set. We can it's not we can't say yet, but it's definitely it's not gonna be him. Oh, that's too bad. Why why don't you think he wants to fight you? I don't know, man. He say he wants uh, someone else. Uh, I can't. I, it's hard. It's hard to speak for him, but he don't want it. So what can I say? That's crazy. Did he ever get back to you? Because I saw you on Twitter you were going at him, but did he ever respond? No, nah, he said at one point like, "Oh, I'm game. Yeah, whatever." <laughs> but it didn't happen. Okay. So. Fair enough. Now, looking at the tournament right now, they just released the, the roster, obviously, as far as uh, who's going to be in the tournament. Who would you say is the toughest fighter in the tournament, aside from yourself? Because I know you're, you're going to say you're the toughest guy, right? Uh, for the welterweights, man, like, all, the guys, all those guys are really, really tough. Like, um, there's, like, very good wrestlers, like uh, Rick Story, Paul Bradley, Bubakar, uh, my buddy Jake Shields. Um, there are some good strikers, some guys coming from Europe. I think, like, uh, it's a very good mix. You know, and uh, I'm very excited, man. Like, you know, like, I don't want to go there. And, you know, I want to fight I want to fight the best guys possible, you know. So I'm very excited. That's yeah. what I want. Well, I was going to ask you, you mentioned Jake Shields. Are you worried at all you guys might have to square off in the tournament just because you guys, uh, you know, we've trained together? Yeah, we trained together. We, we spoke about it. it was like, man, if we have to do it, we're going to do it, you know. Until then, we're going to train together. We're going to help each other. But if we have to face each other, then, you know. We everyone we train separately, and after that we have a beer together, and it's all good. So tell me how excited we, you were when you found out they were doing the tournament. I know things have been delayed a little bit, but it's still such a cool concept, and I think that's one of the things that's really going to bring in new fans is watching the tournament format. Uh, I think it's very fair, you know. Like uh, it's not like a uh, so for example, trash talk's not going to give you a fight. Um, you know, like uh, every everyone's going to make the same money. You know, like it's not going to be like this guy makes more because he has a big mouth. This guy, every, it's, going, it's going to be a very fair, the best fighter is going to, is going to win. You know, that's it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Now, what's your training camp going to look like uh, ahead of when it, when it is you're supposed to compete? Uh, is it just keeping things uh, business as usual, training in New York? Yeah, uh, I train like most of the time in New York City with um, my professor, Hansel Grace Academy. Like I uh, do my striking there, my boxing, my boxing coach goes there, my Muay Thai coach is there too. And my Jiu-Jitsu coach, my wrestling coach comes to my academy in upstate New York. It's a... Um, I run a Hansel Grace affiliated school here. So my wrestling coach coming here is an amazing guy. My strength condition I do around here too. So yeah, man, I have a very good camp. A very, very good guys behind me. And, and one of the luxuries of, uh, you know, being part of your management team uh, is that uh, I know a lot of times Ali will bring fighters by the gym. I know Habib was there training a bit for 223. Did you get to roll with him at all uh, before his last fight? I haven't, tra- I haven't trained with him. And, but like, uh, yeah, like you said, like these guys, man, they're there all, all the time. 
We have a bunch of like the, the it's like the biggest jiu-jitsu academy in the world. So all the tough guys are they like they want to go there to train with us. We have a great great group of guys too. So it's amazing. Who are some of the guys you get to train with on a regular basis? Like, is there any sort of main training partners you you primarily work with? Uh yeah. Um, usually, um, I train a lot with uh, Ismailino Rama, uh, Jared Gordon. Um, I have my buddy uh, Manny Wallo, Neiman Gracie, uh, Gordon Ryan, Jiu Jitsu, Gary Tannen. All the guys from the morning class, and man, we have a great group of guys. Great, great group of guys. How's yeah. how's Jared's uh, weight cut going? I know he, he wants to fight at forty five. His next fights, so he's been doing that test cut. How's he doing? Is he's not too grumpy getting down to forty five? Is he? Yeah, actually, I texted him uh, a couple hours before, um, and he told me, "Man, like he's going well. He said he's going to do weight good." And he said, "Like let's have some dinner after after that." I was like, "Yeah, absolutely, man." That's good. Okay, well, that sounds yeah. like everything's going well for him. That's good to hear. Yeah. Um, so obviously, the winner of this tournament will get a million dollars. Has that hit you yet? As far as what you do with the money, like if if you won the million dollars, what would you do with it? Man, uh, what I'm going to do with the money, man? I'm 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 going to invest. Like uh, like the money gets in, I'm going to invest. I don't I don't depend on fight money to survive. So uh, because I you know I run the cl- uh, jiu jitsu class, so. Man, I'm going to invest the money next day after I win the tournament. I'm going to be teaching my classes, and that's it. Okay. Still keep yeah. it humble, you know, just uh, invest yeah. and sort of, sort of move forward, right? Yeah, you... but I, yeah man. Like, it's not like uh, I don't have, like, a big aspirations as, like, I want to be this. I want to be a, a rock star, whatever. Man, I'm a martial artist, you know? For me, it's go there. Of course, the prize is amazing, but the, for, the, the concept is, is even better, fighting for to be, become the best. So that's what matters. Like, that's the most important part to me. And I guess is the plan just with your career, I don't want to look too far ahead, but is the plan to just stay with PFL for the rest of your career, or do you want to eventually make that leap to the UFC? Uh, I'm very happy with PFL. Like, um, I don't want to plan, like, oh, I want to go to this organization, to that organization. Man, I want to be the best, best I can be, and uh, potentially the best in the world. You know, like, uh, it's hard to say that when I'm coming off a loss, you know, but man, I know my potential. Everyone around me, uh, around me knows, you know. Um, I can't say it was a bad luck, but it was like mistakes that I did in the past. I'm learning. So some guys like mature later, some fighters mature. Uh, like you see guys like 21 were rocking the UFC, like a, uh, clo- getting close to becoming world champion. And they get to 30, they go down. I'm in the opposite. I've been learning, man, little by little, by little, by little, by little. And at 32 right now, I'm on my best. So, uh, my biggest, uh, inspiration is my buddy, Demi Maya. So he's like 41, man. He's rocking. And we train together all the time. And he's like a beast, man. Nice. Is, is so Dam- is Damien training in New York now? Uh no, Damien comes to New York for uh do wrestling camps, um our wrestling academy, uh, Edge in Hoboken. Okay. And, you know, so we 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 got we spend a lot of time together on the mats. And man, like he's a big, big inspiration for me because he's a guy with like he's 41, he's healthy, training, competing and all. So that's my idea. And can still submit half the roster. That guy's jujitsu is still top notch. I mean, it's crazy to think. You know, just a couple fights ago. I mean, you remember when he was, you know, you know, almost submitting George Masvidal and guys like that. Like, it's crazy to see how well he's doing at his age. Yeah, man. No, he's a definitely inspiration. He's a guy. He's a guy. Actually, it's funny because for me, I try to 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 stay cool. But I've been watching that guy since I started jujitsu in two thousand, watching his DVDs and all this stuff. He was my hero with the gi. And then the guy went to MMA. And now we train with him. We're buddies. We're like, what the hell? And it's fucking cool, you know. <laughs> But I keep it cool with, uh, around him. <laughs> That's awesome, man. All right, most important question in this interview. What do you like doing on your downtime? Are you watching any Netflix? Are you just uh, going exploring New York? What, what would I find you doing when you're not teaching or training or everything else? No, it's, it's, man, I, I'm really chill in, the, in the, my downtime. You know, like uh, I live in the woods. So like I, I, I go to the city to train, but I live in the, in, the, um, in the woods. So, man, I like to go ride horses, you know, hiking, all this stuff. I, I like to stay like low key. Nice. That's good. I didn't yeah. even realize that, like, so how far away are you from, like, sort of the, the inner city and everything? Is it pretty, pretty uh, I far? live, like, an hour and a half from New York City, but I go there pretty much every day. Oh, okay. Think, yeah, yeah. So let me ask you this, then. You're in the car. You're going to practice. Or are you listening to music, a podcast? What would I find you doing? Uh, I listen to a lot of podcasts, man. Love Joe podcasts. Rogan? Or, or what do you listen uh, to? I, I like uh, Joe Rogan, Elite Man Podcast, uh, Rich Roll, like, um, there's a bunch of us. Yeah, Jocko. Okay. I like it. You got some good selection there. Well, uh, Joao, uh, Joao, I should say, uh, it's going to be a great tournament coming up here. Uh, it's the PFL uh, welterweight tournament coming up. Uh, this whole season is going to be great. Uh, just remind people where they can get a hold of you on social media. And if you got any sponsors or shout outs, man, the floor is yours. Yeah, um, yeah. you guys can find me on uh, Instagram, Zephyrin MMA, Twitter, and Zephyrin MMA. My Facebook fan page, Zephyrin MMA. It's everything Zephyrin MMA. And that's it. And I want to send, uh, uh, send a big shout out to my sponsor, Fuji. Fuji, man, Fuji Sports, they're, they're awesome. 
What's up, Fight Fans? If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to see even more interviews with your favorite UFC and Bellator fighters. We've also got coverage at events, including post-fight press conferences and media scrums. And if you like this video, check out the video to my right. It's worth your time.